Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Arkansas RC Newbie, and on today's episode, we are going to be taking a look, a little initial impressions and install on the Hot Racing 100 millimeter internal shocks. I'm super excited about these guys. We have been having a lot of issues with the Desert Lizards, so um, guys, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's get into it. Alright guys, so before we talk about the hot racing shocks, I want to show you guys, um, well, some of the issues I've kind of been having with the Desert Lizards and the reason I'm wanting to change them over to the hot racing, at least try them out. We're going to install them and take a look on today's episode. Now the Desert Lizards here, as you can see, I added me a little shock mount that actually kind of kicks that sucker back. And I had a tomahawk, right? I won this off of a crawling competition. The tomahawks here, I actually put two bolts on the chassis so they wouldn't move whatsoever and I kind of use those as a shock mount as well so I can get that whole triangular shape going. Now the front one, Desert Lizard, when I push down on the axle it starts to move and then from that point I'm good crawling because it's actually broken free. It's just if I have this thing and I forget to break them free and I start to crawl it takes a lot of force to actually get the front suspension working. So it's been a big issue of mine. Now since I have switched to the Tomahawks in the rear it's helped out tremendously. You can see the rear here is already drooping down. There's almost too much just free movement in here especially while I'm side climbing and uh, it's just not enough resistance. Now I'm running about 47 and a half shock oil on the Desert Lizards with with the medium uh, springs right now in the internals. The RGT is so top heavy. The center of gravity on this thing is pretty bad. We've got the servo and the motor mount up here. Everything is so high. So basically anytime I start to tilt over, I usually end up toppling completely over uh, just because um, the weight being up so high and this rear wanting to kind of move all over the place. I love the articulation on flat stuff and when I'm climbing straight up, but again, the uh, side climbing is just a big issue. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about the Hot Racing 100 millimeter um, internally or internal shocks that we've got here. Now you can see this thing, um, well, I don't know if you can tell, but they're, they're brand new. I've got them set up as of right now that I'm running a 50 weight in here and the droop set up, I've got the little disc or the uh, piston, whatever you want to call that up at the top and I'm running the shock below it. Now one of the downsides with the hot racing shocks, in my opinion, is the little piston or the disc. Um, again, leave it in the comments what the heck that thing is called. There's no, uh, there's no extra ones that this the setup comes with and you can't really fire it down to get any more kind of travel or any more uh, fluid movement throughout the shock. So that's kind of a, a pain in the butt, but they do give you a pretty good amount of uh, springs. And again, we're running the mediums in here, but they give you a soft, medium, and a stiff spring, which I did appreciate. I picked these things up for $24 a set, so I had to get two sets, of course. We're going to be installing them here shortly. Um, another thing I did was I took out one of the O-rings from the bottom or the screw, the cap, whatever you want to call that. I took one of the O-rings out of here so I can get some better movement. And now with the 50 oil, you can see it actually pulls back quite well and pretty, there's some pretty good movement in there. There was a lot more resistance, but pretty slow. So I'm a huge fan of that. There's just a lot more pull pressure here than what I'm used to when it comes to the rear, at least with the RGT or the Desert Lizards I'm running right now. So there's really no... Um, no bit of resistance there, and that's 47 and a half weight. Now, one of the other downsides to the shock is the piston here, um, the stanchion. This is actually, um, it's hollow inside, and that was a big pain in the butt because when I was adding oil, I would get nothing but air buildup in the stanchion, and that was so difficult. So that was another reason I just had them sit overnight and let all the air kind of circulate to the top, and then I had to put more oil in them. So they definitely took about three times as long. Again, the Arkansas RC newbie, um, I'm not really sure on what I'm doing just yet, but they took a super long time to set these guys. And I'm actually thinking about mounting these guys upside down. You guys let me know, um, do you run your shocks upside down? Or do you run them uh, right side up? And again, I think that's going to help out with the center of gravity. I was having a discussion with one of the guys on the channel a while back. So I think we'll mount these guys upside down. They do come with a uh, decent amount of mounting hardware. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I had to watch a video on how to install all of the O-rings and everything else with these. So that's going to be pretty interesting to get to on today's episode. Episode, but we've got all four of them here again 50 weight with the medium shock droop set up 
Without further ado, hopefully I showed you guys some good B-roll on all of the stuff I'm talking about. Uh, let me know if you guys have used these before. I'll put a affiliate link in the description below if you guys are interested. But let's go ahead and start taking the RGT, the Desert Lizards, off of this guy. And then what I think what we're going to do is we'll take the front off and we'll take the rear. We'll install one set of the des or of the um, hot racing shocks and we'll see um, kind of the right side versus the left. All right, and again, these hot racing shocks, they come with a massive amount of mounting hardware. I mean, that's just a lot to deal with there. Okay, we'll get these little swivels here. What we're going to do is we'll put it through the, I guess the top portion. I guess we'll put the O-ring just like that. That's how we're gonna set this up. Hopefully the guy in the video I watched was correct. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go through the bottom part of the axle down here. And I am absolutely loving my little Traxxas screwdriver. This thing has been awesome. So helpful. If I put a spacer in there, it's actually going to, like I said, cause friction, not allow any free movement down there. So we'll keep it like that. We'll do the exact same thing with the O-rings. Very strange with the O-rings. So you can see the screws that the hot racing shocks come with are actually tapered down. And we have a spacer that actually has a groove cut in there that's tapered itself. It's kind of beveled down there. So what we're gonna do is we'll stick that through that guy. And then we'll add up one of these big spacers that this comes with. So we've got that tightened down pretty good up here. And if you guys can see, we've actually got a lot of movement. So I think the, uh, I think those little O-rings actually help as opposed to hurt it. I didn't know how that was going to go, but we're getting some good movement in there. Yeah, see, I think that is definitely going to be so much better. We'll do a little side by side, but when I pull it, yeah, that is what I want, guys. And again, guys, if you are enjoying this content, man, I appreciate if you guys hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you ain't subscribed. This is uh, the community on this whole YouTube um, and uh, just getting so much support from everybody out there. It's been awesome. I wasn't sure how people were going to react to Arkansas RC newbie and just somebody that doesn't really know a whole bunch but and really enjoys the tinkering aspect of, of this hobby. Um, man, you guys have been showing some love. So all you guys out there, again, man, if you guys would uh, give your boy a thumbs up comment let me know have you guys used the hot racing or do you guys prefer the desert lizards these things everybody uses desert lizards the reason i got them but you know this is a youtube channel so always trying out different things is great all right so that's fully tightened let's look at the movement all right so we got good movement side to side now let's take a look and let's see if we got any stiction problems all right so it takes a little bit longer to pull up and we're not making any contact. So it pulls up very slow, right? Still pulling up there, that's exactly what I want. And I think mounting them upside down is gonna be very interesting, especially compared to this, check this side out. So the Desert Lizards do pull a little bit more. All right, we're just gonna let it go. All right, so we've got the Desert Lizard over here that's already showing some stanchion. And then we have got the Hot Racing on this side, of course, and we're just showing a little bit. All right, so that's pretty impressive. There's only about two and a half difference in the oils. All right, now full extension all the way down and the pull up. The Hot Racing is definitely way smoother. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to swap these. The, uh, uh, left side out real quick. Let's go ahead and put the hot racings on here and then we'll put some wheels on this thing We'll take a look and kind of see how they act All right guys. Well, we got them all installed and I want to show you um, We'll do a little bit of the movement with this thing But first of all, I want to show you um, how slow the back retracts or uh, I guess decompresses so I pull it up and it's still dropping a little bit and then it stops now the stopping point I'm a huge fan of we've got some more I would say probably, I don't know, about 20 millimeters there of travel. And it stops right about 20 millimeters. That's a lot better than the Desert Lizards in the full extension that we were getting, right? So we've got about that much on the rear. And when I go here, I can pull just a little bit more. And then we get a whole bunch of movement back there for some really good articulation. And the thing I'm really excited about with the front here, as you can see, is they are not moving whatsoever um, until we start to do this number here. So that is awesome right there. I mean, we can get full flex on this guy. And that is some great articulation. I mean, look at that. If I'm planting this back wheel down, everything's planted. That is right at, you guys see that? That's right at about five and a half inches. Five and a half inches on the front. Let's check this rear. 
Wow, look at that height. We're getting there. Oh yeah, that's right at six, six inches, six and a half maybe, somewhere in there on the outside of the wheel, six and a half. Bottom is somewhere around six. So that is just great. But completely settles down a whole lot easier. We can see here, I'll raise the whole thing up for you guys and we'll see how slow everything droops down. That's not very much at all, and that's exactly what I wanted. Again, just mounting these things upside down, helping out with the center of gravity since the RGT is just set up to be so high with all of the weight. We can kind of pull it here, and then what we'll do is let's extend it full in the rear, okay, as much as it'll go. We'll push down the front axle, and then we'll drop it, and we'll see how slow it takes. Well, we'll set it down, and it just settles down. Front's being all the way used up now. We're fully decompressed on the front. The rear's got just a little bit more in the stanchions back there, and we can push that down. But I'm I'm super happy with that, guys. Super happy with it. My back, everything's making contact. That's great. Look at that. Look at that back work. Yeah, guys, I am super happy with it. Um, again, I'm the Arkansas RC Newbie. I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see me take this thing out and crawl with it. Get you guys some good shots whenever the uh, whenever the weather is better. It is freezing cold outside right now. But, man, I am in love with these things. The way they settle down. They're a lot beefier than the desert lizards. Um, I am thinking that uh, this probably be the ones I keep on this thing so far. I don't know. we got to do the whole test run on there. But $23, $24 are about... $3 cheaper than the uh, Desert Lizards. A little bit harder, in my opinion, to set up and just bleed completely just because the, the little bore there inside of the piston or the the shock or, uh, or the stanch, whatever you want to call that. But that little area that traps the air is very annoying. But all right, guys. Well, we will see you on the next one again. Please like, please subscribe, and uh, I am going to get out of here.